This week I'm going to share with you three recipes without using your oven so you don't heat up the kitchen and they're still going to be just as yummy. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. For our first recipe I'm going to be using the crock pot. This is a good twist on taco night. We love to always change it up instead of just doing the same old tacos every single week. This week we're going to be having Fritos taco bowls. I'm going to start out on the stovetop browning my ground beef and onion, then everything is going into the crock pot and it'll be ready for dinner tonight. The only chopping I'm going to have to do is just chopping up this onion. You could always add in some jalapeno or um, even some green chilies as well, like even diced green chilies from a can. I think I only need about half of the onion. I'm going to put the other half of the onion in this little onion keeper that I have. I found this at TJ Maxx, I think, a while back. This part is stretchy, so if it's a large onion, it'll stretch over it. It's really nice. So I've got one pound of ground beef here in this skillet. I'm also going to add our half an onion, and we're just going to brown this. My meat is browning on the stove, so now I'm coming over to my crock pot. I've got my smaller crock pot today. I don't need my larger one. I'm just going to go ahead and spray it with a little bit of nonstick spray. You could use a liner as well. We are going to empty in two cans of chili beans. I am not going to drain these. That's the great thing about chili beans is you want to keep that juice. It's a lot of flavor in that juice. We're going to add in a can of Rotel. Again, you don't want to drain it. And one eight ounce can of tomato sauce. Gracie, I have nothing for you, babe. I have no cheese. None. I'm not lying. Now, my ground beef is very lean, so I don't have to worry about draining it, but if you've got a fattier meat, then you'll need to drain off the grease before you move on to the next step. We're gonna add in a pack of taco seasoning, or about two to three tablespoons of homemade taco seasoning, like I have. And I'm gonna add in a third a cup of water. The original recipe called for one and a half pounds of ground beef and a half a cup of water, but I didn't want to break up two packs of ground beef. So we just went with one pound. Okay, this is done. Let's turn off the stove and head over to the crock pot. Yeah, we'll add cheese at the end, okay? Yeah, not right now. I'll see you later, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Directly into our crock pot, we are gonna add in our ground beef and onion mixture. And now you just wanna mix this really well. And you can cook it on high for three to four hours or low for five to six hours. It is one o'clock, so I'm gonna do it on low. I think we'll be fine. <laughs> Why are we going in circles? All I did was open the fridge and get this out. I haven't opened it, I haven't done anything. Everybody wants to see you. Hang on. Sweet girl. This is not the hand I pet her with, <laughs> just so you know. There it goes. You've been waiting all day, haven't you? <laughs> I love you, girl. You're the best girl. Okay, so we're about to eat. I've got my Fritos here that we will put in the bottom of the bowls. I cut up some tomato, some cilantro. I did buy already shredded lettuce just for convenience factor. We have some jalapeno slices in here. I have this cheese and some sour cream. I also added an avocado to my grocery order, but they gave me a really green one. Like it's nowhere near being ready. So unfortunately that won't go on tonight's dinner. I'm excited about this because it's got all the ingredients that I love. Yes. So this is deconstructed something or another? No, it's just what? Fritos taco bowls. Oh, I don't That's know all. where I got the deconstructed It's okay. From. Well, they are deconstructed. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's like a hodgepodge over there, right? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes. That good? Yes. <laughs> I love it. It's like a taco bowl. Right. You know? Yep. Loaded up with all your favorite taco toppings and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that is delicious. I mean, there's so much you can do with this. I mean, well, yeah, know? there's so like, much. Yeah. I mean, how are the Fritos on bottom? Are they real soggy already? Mm -hmm. No, yours are. Cole says his aren't. Mine are soggy. Yours are soggy. But, not. but I did make your bowl first. It's been sitting here the longest. It's not like soggy oatmeal, soggy. <laughs> you don't like oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> I hate oatmeal. I know. What? Yeah, but this is this is like. I didn't know you hate oatmeal. This That's is for like, another time, Cole. <laughs> Still got a little bit of crunch to yes. it. Still okay. got some texture to it. Okay, good. I'm you almost need to catch done. Up. You need to catch up. <laughs> I'm almost done. Y'all, this is good. You should definitely make this. So easy. 
so quick. Just put any toppings on there that you want. I really wish we would have avocado for it, but oh well. Ooh, the language. <laughs> Okay, for our second recipe, I am going to be doing one that I saw on one of my friend's YouTube channels. It is called Chicken Cordon Bleu Soup. We're gonna make it in the crock pot. This is my friend Amber, who I lovingly call Glamber. She did this on her channel. So I'm gonna link all of her information below so you can go check her out. If you're looking for more food content, she's your girl, go check her out. But she kind of combined two recipes into one to make this one. And we're gonna do it in the crock pot. We're gonna use a rotisserie chicken, if I can find one. I've been to two stores now and not been able to find one. So I've gotta go look for one, crossing my fingers. But I don't have to put that in until later. So let's get started on what we need to do now. Now. We don't have too much prep work to do. I just need to chop these two red potatoes. Um, I'm gonna peel and chop these carrots and then chop up this celery as well. To get started, I've got my crock pot here. I'm just gonna start adding in all of my celery, my carrots, and my potatoes. We need about four cloves of garlic. I've got about two to three tablespoons of garlic here. Now I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Let's add in some spices. I've got one teaspoon of parsley, a half teaspoon of oregano and thyme, and then about a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper. And lastly, we're gonna add in about two cups of diced ham. I almost forgot, we need a bay leaf or two in here as well. Now we just need to add in our chicken broth. I have reduced sodium chicken broth. We're gonna add in around five cups. This one container is four cups, so I'll empty this entire thing in there. And I already had one open in the fridge. I'll just add about a cup. That's it for now. So we're gonna let this cook on high for about three hours. So it's been a little over three hours. It went to keep warm. My potatoes and my carrots should be good and soft. I was able to pick up a rotisserie chicken just now at a food lion. So what I'm gonna do now is shred this chicken. We need about two to three cups of shredded chicken. So now I've taken my lid off. I'm gonna add in my chicken that I just shredded. I'm gonna give that a good stir. I'm also gonna add in this entire pint of half and half or two cups. We are getting a storm. I don't know if y'all just heard that thunder. Sounds like it's a good night for soup, even though it's still hot outside. To my bowl that I had my chicken in, I've got a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch. We're just gonna pull some of this liquid out of here and mix it with the cornstarch. And I know this had gone to warm, but I have turned it back up to high. And I'm gonna add this in. This is gonna help thicken it over the next hour or so. So I stirred that all together. I'm gonna put the lid back on and we're gonna cook it for another hour on high. Okay, we just have about 10 minutes left. So what I'm gonna do now is just take some Swiss cheese and place it in here. We're gonna let that melt. I'm gonna put maybe four or five slices in. I gotta be careful and not grab the paper in between. <laughs> okay, so our cheese has melted. I'm gonna find both of our bay leaves. You're supposed to taste it at the end and add salt and pepper as needed, and I totally forgot to do that. So we just added salt and pepper here at the table. Mmm. Oh, wow. Yes. Lots of herbs in here. Yep. I like that because it goes well with the chicken. Also made us some, well, I've kind of burnt some <laughs> garlic toast in, under the broiler. Oh yeah, this is like great rainy weather comfort food. Which it has been raining today, so mm -hmm. that works well. So I think somebody liked it. Just a tad bit. Just, just, just. Just a smidgen. <laughs> this is so good. There's so much flavor going on in here. Highly recommend. You can't have mine, go get I think more. I'll have more. <laughs> I gotta tell y'all a little saying that we say all the time around here. If you look at me and you have affection in your eyes and you say, I like you, what do you follow that with? You can come over to my house. <laughs> we always say that. We say, I like you, you can come over to my house. Mm -hmm. So he just came in here and he said, I like this soup, it can come over to my house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. It's good. Okay, y'all, it's the third recipe of the week, and that means it's Subby Supper Night. This last weekend, our family, our entire family, my mom, my dad, my sister and her family, and then me and Stephen and Cole, all went up to the Knoxville, Tennessee area to see my Uncle Danny, which is my mom's brother, and his wife, my Aunt Lonnie. My Uncle Danny smoked a pork butt that was just phenomenal, and my Aunt Lonnie, she cooked lots of different things, but one of the things that stood out to us that we just could not get enough of was a mango salad. My Aunt Lonnie is Filipino. She came to live in the US in the late 90s and she met my Uncle Danny 
in the fall of either 97 or 98. She and my uncle Danny got married the year after we did. So they got married in 2001. She's been a part of our family since then. And y'all, every single Christmas, one of the biggest things that we look forward to at Christmas time are her egg rolls. She always makes them up in Knoxville and they come down and she freezes them. And then when, as like an appetizer on Christmas day, when they come down, she will heat up some oil and cook them. It's like the highlight of Christmas day. And because of the pandemic lately, she hasn't been down for a couple of years. So we were very excited to get to go up there and see them. She did make egg rolls while we were there, but she made so much more. And this mango salad just stood out and it's the perfect summer side dish. And I'm gonna share it with y'all today. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and do two cucumbers. I did take the seeds out so you could get a seedless one if you wanted to. That's just how my Aunt Lonnie does it. She takes all the seeds out and then just chops it into small pieces. So let's go ahead and add this to our bowl. Those are not gonna be used in this salad. They are just from a friend's garden. They gave it to me. I have good friends. I got my cucumber from a friend. I got my tomatoes from a friend. It just works out well. Next, I chopped up a red and a green bell pepper. We're gonna add that in. Now we need to add the main ingredient, which is our mangoes. I've never cut a mango. Any mango that I've ever used, it's always been frozen or already pre-cut in something. So this is new to me. So let's see how this goes. Is there a pit in this? Sure does feel like it. Okay, I'm very confused. Maybe I should have looked this up before I just started hacking into a, my mango. What do you think? It's hard in the middle for sure. Okay. Guess who just looked on YouTube how to cut a mango? I was onto something there at the end. So <laughs> I probably should have done that beforehand. I'm sure you got a good laugh. So we chopped up this one. Now let's cut it the correct way. Let me know below. Have you ever cut up a mango? I'm a 40 year old woman who has never cut up a mango. Now I'm supposed to set, stand it up, kind of like I was thinking earlier. Mm -hmm. I need to go, there we go. On the side of the seed, I guess there's a long seed straight down the middle. Now I can go on the narrow side Ta -da. Okay, so now that I have my mangoes in there, I'm gonna add some pine nuts. That's what my Aunt Lonnie adds. Now we're just gonna add a little bit of cilantro and believe it or not, my son liked this salad a lot and it had cilantro in it, but it was very finely chopped and it wasn't a lot. So let me start with this amount. Yeah, you don't want a lot of cilantro. You don't want it to overpower. It's just that little hint. So I think that's the perfect amount. Now, the only other thing we have to add is some zesty Italian dressing. My store only had the light in stock, but that's not what I would have gone for. And I really don't know how much of this to use. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna start with that, mix it around. I don't want it swimming in it. Hers definitely did not have a whole lot of liquid to it. Okay, let me taste it. Um, I think that's perfect. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. We're not eating this until later. If I need to add more later, I will, but I just don't want it to have too much. This is such a good summer salad. We ate this. She made a lot and we made it every meal while we were there. Okay, so we're gonna dig into this. We've already had lunch. It's just been a crazy day. So I picked up Chick-fil-A lunch, but this is kind of almost like a dessert. I mean, not really. It's it's just so good, y'all. It's so light. What about them glasses, Steven? I don't think they've seen your glasses. <laughs> uh, wow. Very crisp and then it's sweet. Sweet mango. The mango there. Mm -hmm. And then the Italian dressing gives it a little bit yep. of a, you know, pop of flavor. Mm -hmm. Love the contrasting flavors of the pepper and the, the pine nuts. Yeah. When you give it a pine nut, it's like a little just interesting surprise. Yeah. And you can't really taste the cilantro too much. It's very, very slight. Mm. Y'all, this is so incredibly good. This would be great to take to a get together because it's a cold salad for the summer. My Aunt Lonnie, I mean, Y'all, she's a wonderful cook. This is not the only thing that she made that we loved, but mm. it's just so good. So give this one a try. Thank you, Aunt Lonnie, for introducing us to this. This is gonna be a new favorite for the mm -hmm. summertime, for sure. That's gonna do it for this week. I hope you enjoyed these recipes that will not heat up your kitchen. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up before you head out. If you haven't joined my YouTube family, make sure you hit that red subscribe button before you go, and I will see y'all next week. Bye. Don't steam up the camera.
and get it all over your hands. Hang on. And steam up the camera. Might find a needle in a haystack. Come on now. Where are you? Hello. Okay. Nowhere to run to, baby. Nowhere to hide. Okay, I put two in here, right? Oh, oh, found it. Found it. So, I think somebody liked it. Just a tad bit. Just, just, just. Just a smidgen. <laughs> I don't think there's supposed to be a D on the end of it. It's just smidgen. Right? Like pigeon? Hold up now. Right? I don't know. We need a chat poll. Uh-oh. Okay. That's what we need. It's smidgen. Not smidgened. Right? Smidgen. Smidgen. Yeah. It ain't smidgened. Yeah, but if you want to be more proper, you would say smidgened. No. You just you can't you, you, you say can't that if you make want to redneck be. proper, okay? That is true. <laughs> there ain't no properness about this right here. <laughs> Old country boy ain't proper.